Hello, my name is Jay Morgan with TW Replays. A bit of a throwback one for you. It's myself, Gold, and Riskard. And we are going to attempt the Corbo Drop. Gold is going to be our main feature here. This tactic, if you missed it in a previous video, is a uh, really narrow attack through the center. We've only done this with a French player. The feature is three militia, three old guard, a couple heavy cav, and then whatever else you want to bring with it. You'll notice gold's very narrow formation. And he's going to attack right down the middle. This puts uh, a little pressure on your teammates to kind of fold in and cover your franks. Uh, your, your franks. Cover your franks. Uh, but we've had a lot of success with this strategy. This is the first time I've done it with gold and Riskard coming back to the game for the first time in a couple years. But we'll give it a shot, see what happens. Our opponents, all Prussia. Okay, sure. We got some lights up there. And gold moves up. You know, a uh, fun fact on this one, Ris <laughs> Riskard had just reinstalled the game and didn't have unrestricted camera set up, so he's playing on the regular camera. Limiting factor. And there goes gold. Opponents aren't really that active or moving that much. Whatever that looks like. We had a conversation before the game started, um, like what Gold's army composition is. My opinion was, after you have those initial eight units, the Militia, the Old Guard, the Heavy Cab, it doesn't really matter. Um, after the game, Gold thought that having the lights was kind of irrelevant. I think that because the tactic gets you in so close you just want whatever brings the most firepower if that means and, and gold has just here here J just whatever gives you the most firepower probably coupled with the most morale is what you want you just want units that stick around so you know whatever that looks like And let's see if we can get the action going. What we're doing right now, okay, so here we go. Militias are moving. But we did take a brief pause to try to get my guys back to fresh. And so everybody's moving. I suppose that the existence of the Prussian lights is a little awkward. You're going to have to take a... I mean, the opponent's going to have stuff in the middle of their line, right? That's what you're trying to kill. In this case, the opponent countercharges with a land where it's going to take a little bit of the brunt of the militia hit. But there goes the volley from the lights. Onto a militia, that's fine. Here comes a uh, shooter cab. What is nice about having the shooter cab is they can shoot over the back of you guys. I have never noticed the sun up there like that. So there's a brief pause while we have to route this land where but the important part is that we try to start a big fight right in the center. And then what I'm trying to do is, you know, kind of draw a diagonal line. My lights are here. Yeah, and they go the shooter cab over the back, which is nice. So the militia come in. They're followed very closely by the lights and a rank of, looks like Swiss Swiss Polish to me. The inevitable um, counter charge from the cab come in, so all the squares go up. 
There's the second cabinet coming in. And in this game, the militia don't exactly get in the melee, but they just kind of stand there. I think that kind of works. Here come two more cab units. And what you have accomplished at this point, you know, if we just pause the game here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13! 13 units are in a little pocket right here. 14, 15, 16 fighting against all of this and even if you go into square you're you're so close range that you're still getting damage done now this is the danger right here is you know the ability of this person to get in the flank and you're really relying on risk guard here this is the counter movement to control this my attempts to control this are you know, a varying degree of success, but mostly involves my lights. So Riskard's counter charge here is very important in order to protecting the main body of Gold's advance. And using the shooter cap here, which are frankly fairly poor in melee, I think is fine because you're not exactly looking for damage. You're just looking for kind of keeping them busy. And this is, again, a problem. I'm trying to control this with my lights. Gold's charge here is probably more effective. Um, my cab unit should probably be involved here a little late on that. And I'm trying to move this line unit up to be relevant. And then here are the guard infantry that if they can get shots on these infantry is kind of what we're looking at. And your goal is really to route these units, which allow you to turn one direction or the other. Now here come the big heavy cab. There's the Curacay. I think this player made a, this, I, I don't want to call it a mistake, but they wound up trying to withdraw their lights a bit. And Gold's objective is to get in there with the heavy cab. Risk guard's got a position here, controlling the flank. Right, and so the way this tactic works is if you can create a scenario where you got way too many guys in the center for your opponent to occupy, and even if they go into square, you just deal so many casualties fairly quickly then they can't really react. The opponent's already spent their cab. We accept an attrition at, at some level. And here's the payoff, is the heavy cab are mixing it up with his lights that have withdrawn. So you're getting kind of virtual advantage. These units are not relevant, being held off by one cab unit. These guys are shooting, sure, but risk guards on their flank. Gold's breaking through the center. And with an aggressive, you know, if you can control his flank like this, then you're doing pretty good. Notice my opponent not really playing with all of his units here. Risk guards general dies. Don't know what that was about, but he's got a general fight going on. And the goal of this, you know, I don't know, what, what's the right word? Deployment is you just create so much havoc in the center that the opponents can't react to it in a very meaningful way. They kind of are, are on, you know, the back foot the entire game. My Kev are finally involved. Just gumming up their line a little bit. Gold at this point, I guess it's worth taking a pause. Minimap is helpful here. There's just not much red right there anymore, right? Gold's cleared everybody out. And if you can achieve that, Gold's heavy cab is still rocking back there. If you can achieve that, then now he gets to turn. That's these units here. 
to the left, he's going to be able to turn to the right. And then, you know, you can see this kink in the line right here. Then the game's kind of up. Looks like risk guard's attrition pretty well right there. But you come out of this scenario where Gold's wiped his opponent with, let's call it, eight units left. And the big attack down the center is a large enough shock that just most, most armies can't handle that. Unless it's countered by an aggressive move by something like this to push me back. More often than not, going to be successful. A couple counterplays you could do if you're the defending player here is just to kite super aggressively. Um, there's some counterplay to that in that I'm already on this player's flank, so you would have to have all three players, you know, really coordinated. I don't, I don't see that happening exactly. This is some desperation stuff from the opponent. We got a general in there. The last cav is being committed to try to stop an old guard. But you can see gold is now coming back to the right. And that means that this player is kind of doomed. They do start, I mean, they kind of figure it out and they start this movement over here. I react to that a little slowly and my thought at this point is, I've cleared this guy's lights out except for this one. What is that? It's probably gold, yeah. Uh, and so I'm kind of content just to take a general fight here. I don't really care. It's pretty obvious that um, we're gonna roll from the left to the right. And that's me moving. Just to be like, okay, let, we can have our line shoot at each other, that's fine. Uh, Risk Guard's guy is pretty much dead. Not much red on the minimap anymore. And that's kind of how this goes. Uh, you do the big hit in the middle, they don't react appropriately, and you get an easy win. So if you were looking to uh, Put some energy into your 3v3 grassy game. This is a uh, pretty fun way to do it. Uh, very successful with this tactic. It's it's neat. It breathes some new life into uh, the 3v3 grassy game. Just looking at the map there, it looks like gold came out of this with eight units left. That's pretty impressive. Wrapping around now. And what makes this fight a little lopsided is the balance of power bar is because gold wipes the center player so fast, it means that we just have more men on the field, which creates a morale penalty for the rest of the defending player, which um, makes them route a little bit earlier, which is cool. And there you go. Gold playing the Corbo drop is what you get. It's good to get a game with these guys. Let's see if we can get you a results screen here. Everybody's dead. And, and wrap things up. Yeah. Uh, you know what's weird is Gold actually didn't get the max kills because he was focused on a very narrow part of the field, but routing those units really early causes these big snowballs, which, which is interesting, I think. But that is the game, new tactic that you can use on Grassy 3v3. Uh, thanks for playing with me, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. If you're interested, you can join us on Discord. Usually get games going up on the weekends. I'll put a link to that, and then you can, um, meet and bump into some other streamers and YouTubers who hang out there, get some advice from them if you want to improve your game. A lot of good tips for you. Uh, thank you for watching. My name is Jay Martin. Catch you in the next video.